Hello everybody, welcome to the United Way TV. My name is Rob Dukan, your presenter of this show. In this short video, we'll be talking about Robert, uh, Martinez, Lisandro Martinez injury, the latest if you is Lisandro Martinez injury. We'll be talking a lot about uh, players who might be leaving Manchester United, players who have already left United in, on loan, who are not who are not really doing really well. And also, we'll tell you guys the development of players which United want to bring. Guys, before we start, please... Uh, as usual, uh, click the like on the video. We are a small community. We hope we want to hit 10k, and we will not do that without your help. So, for those of you who are subscribing and liking these videos, thanks. And uh, yeah, let's just get into it. As I said, we will go with or without you, but thanks. We want you to join. It is very important because you, this is your uh, community. Anyway, guys. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, Lisandro Martinez, for most of you watch the game, if you didn't watch the game, but at least you listen, United, I just like to use the word thrashed, um, uh, West Ham uh, in Old Trafford uh, just some couple of days ago, three goals to nil, and Licha had an injury in the 71st minute, which was, uh, some, some say it's a self, self inflict injury. If you watch that action on the game, which um, the player sat on his knee, and he was not in a favorable position. So uh, the news here is that, I mean, after the game, Ten Hag said he was, uh, they haven't done the, uh, generally the, the test. And now the tests are out. And um, Lisandro Martinez will be out for, uh, for at least two months. So eight weeks. Let me just put it two months rather than eight weeks. It sounds more, you know, <clears throat> welcoming for United fans. He'll be out for two months. And that has made uh, um, people like Samuel Lucas of the Manchester Invini News coming out and saying Manchester United um, must do without uh, finding a way to work out in future without Lisandro Martinez. Are, I want to tell you guys something as a United fan, guys, uh, that... Um, yeah, but before I continue that, please, I just want to give some memoration, please. Today it's uh, today is basically the sixth of February, and you guys know that 19, uh, 1958, this was uh, the Busby's Babes when uh, you know that tragedy happened with Manchester United with the Busby Babes, and um, I just want to talk to you, the most international community, because most of the viewers here are more international. Most of my viewers they are not based in the UK. They are not definitely match goer. If you're a match goer, drop your comment below. But yeah, um, United is a massive community and uh, that's why we are uh, we are the sexiest team in the world in the football sense and we are the most um you know uh attractive team even for investors because we have a massive fan base which is not only based in manchester or only in england because one of the biggest fan base and how manchester united are based in africa asia and not even in the uk maybe you didn't know that so uh, uh, the, the busby babes are the reason why we are uh, i cannot say they're the reason why manchester united are playing but one of the reasons why the busby babes are, 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 are taught about that but we think about them today is because um they were a uh, 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 um a generation of very young players in Manchester United. I didn't watch them play. I have no clue, but I read a little bit about that generation of United because if you love a club, you always want to dig behind and understand the history about it. Uh, you know, you know my two clubs I love. I love Manchester United and Real Madrid in Spain, and I used to like AC Milan. But Manchester United is a team which I went deep because I was watching them. I mean, like, oh, I've been watching them for over 30 years. I don't know about you. But yeah, guys, uh, 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 so the, 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 they, they, they had this uh, crash in 1958, um, February the 6th. It was a very bad strategy in Munich, in Munich. And if you're a Manchester United fan and you're in this family, which we have, diverse one for sure, with different opinions, uh, yeah, we need to kind of uh, always think about this day and it reflects it reminds me of what Ten Hag is doing today with Manchester United which you know he is trying to build a team of young uh, Manchester United players homebred players Ganacho when I call the name shout whoa Ganacho whoa you know, I mean? <laughs> you know um yeah Kobe Mwen, whoa Rasmus Holland, 20 years. Whoa, he's not a home base, home, uh, home uh, base player. But uh, yeah, you know, he's 20 years old. The new generation of Manchester United. Talking about generation of Manchester United, let's go back with some players who need to play with these young players in order to maximize the output in Manchester United Football Club. And one of them is Licha. I told you guys just some minutes ago that Martinez will be out for let's say two months guys not eight weeks two months only two months but in two months i mean how many games will united have i think basically in two months 
we might have we uh, and you haven't checked yet. I don't want to lie, but I think not less than five games in two months uh, because we play every week a game. Oh my! And there is an international break, so that's good news. But anyway, so we, are, we there there is a situation where, where where we have to do without Lisandro Martinez, who is going to come in. Ten Hag is going to be the guy who is going to uh, 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 make that decision. Some say Harry Maguire. Some say um, we should bring in uh, uh, the, we should bring in another uh, player, right? But uh, tell me below, who would you like to re replace Harry uh, Lisandro Martinez in that defense? Should Luke Shaw come in? as a defender or should uh should should manchester united just do a, a sweep with one of our defenders this could be a good news i see the young star uh playing during this period i think he can pick his chance the young star what is his name Kambore, the young uh congolese the defender for manchester united i think he can he can grab his shot i mean if he focus on the game i think he can he can do it because he's a good ball playing player but the minor is that he is not a left-footed player, and that's what we'll miss for Lisandro Martinez. And unfortunately, that is the case. So um, Simon Lucas has uh, come out with that statement that it seems as if we're getting, because United, we are trying to go in a new... Uh, I mean, wait, before I forget, I just want to tell you guys, United are trying to bring in players in Manchester United, in the club next season. There have been this big uh, uh, discussion here by the Manchester Evening News, by most of the outlet, even you have uh, the top... Uh, transfer specialists like Fabrizio Romano coming out and saying that United are interested with Bradford. I've said that in the channel already. I did a video, a full video about Bradford, which is a very good defender from Everton. Everton are having a financial situation now with the Premier League, which they need to generate money. It will be even it get worse if they are relegated. They would need to make some money from players. And Bradford is one of the players which most of uh, the teams will want to have. He's a young player, I think six foot four. So tall, young, uh, 1980 not really sure about that but i've watched him play in two games and particularly i saw i just saw some some bits of uh you know of, of uh nesta in him long legs yeah, he reads the game properly he's british he takes the box i think that would uh i've been asked how much would that cost i think that would cost manchester united close to 50 million that is a top top player considering his age and uh, he has a massive resale value so tell me what you think about this player that's where manchester is looking at defense because we're also getting information here that a player like the French Rafael Valaran might be leaving Manchester United. United will need to make a decision, the Enos group. And guys, there is something called the financial fair play. And this is the fi financial fair play has really messed up the way clubs are, are, are doing business. If you took note and you, in the market this year, many play clubs did not buy in January. Chelsea were quiet. Most of all the clubs were quiet. They didn't buy this January. Why? Because they have to manage the books. Financial fair play is one of the reasons why you see um, players who think, clubs who think the way they manage, uh, they do their transfers. And um, is it a good thing? It is a good thing for the clubs. Is it a bad thing? It, it breaks down the the... The anxiety from 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 fans because us fans we have been destroyed already by you no know, talking about wanting to buy name uh, wanting to buy you know think of all those years about Di Maria now we are talking about about a player like um uh, the French attacker Mbappe so uh, financial fair play is best it's a, it's a good thing for Manchester for for football in general which I do support and it would help us to have a, a good playing field and keep the game very healthy in my view so. I regress. I regress. We're talking about something else. But coming back to players, I have some news about players. We have Ericsson, which uh, there is an information I saw on, on the, I think it was the Express. I don't know one of these. I read in this new, on these papers. They're talking about Ericsson moving to Ericsson might be interested to move to Turkey because he wants to play the Euros. He is not a stable player for United. Is that something that Ten Hag will accept? For him to leave, he has to get the blessing of Eric Ten Hag. What is your opinion about that? If you have watched all the games with Manchester United of recent, Ericsson has not been coming in. And you see a player like, you know, um, Mark Tommy has been the one, he has been the, the first sub whenever I want to bring in a sub. Because the way football works, you always need to understand who you bring in certain situation. And we haven't seen Ericsson in our last two, three games or so, yeah. Uh, he hasn't played a major a major role in all these games. So that's one of the reasons why, you know, all the stories are coming about that he might move on. That's we've spoken about Ericsson. We've spoken about uh, our defender uh, Rafael Veran, and we've spoken about a possible uh, a possibility of bringing in uh, Brett for Brett White, Brett White, Brett White, 
Braithwaite. I'm not British. I am not British. I'm saying Braithwaite. Please forgive me for that. But anyway, yeah, we, I mean, we must kid. We must be laughing a little bit. But yeah, so let's, coming back to serious issues. We know United are interested in bringing, a play, uh, bringing Neves. Neves from Porto. Neves is the la creme da creme in terms of um, recruitment. United will. But I think the Neves thing is just, you know, the Neves thing is not, is not real. United is not really, he is a young player. He fits the profile of players that Ignos will want to bring. Young players with a strategy, with a playing style. But I have, there's something just telling me that Rav Neves would not be a Manchester United player, no matter how good he is. And one of the reasons is very simple. The reason is because I think that United would not be ready to be paying crazy. There will be a, a level or a limit in transfer from United. So players who are above 50 million, no matter how good you are, will look for other options. So there you go. Because if you are buying Neves for 100 million, as he said, 100 million pounds or euros, I don't care. It's a lot of money, you know. But uh, nevertheless, nevertheless, Benfica has always had very good midfielders. It reminds me of, you know, Matic who played for Benfica. Pablo Ema, who, who was thought to be a, a, a Manchester United interest back in the sphere, I said, experience in days that never came to, to, to pass. And um, yeah, we shall see. We shall see. But I think Neves is a good player. Since when he has been taught, uh, talked about coming to United, I've been watching some of his highlights. Not a full game. And I think he has the... the <clears throat> he has all the qualities of uh, succeeding in the Premier League. But there is also a caveat in this. He hasn't played in the Premier League. He would, the, well, coming into Manchester United with sort of attack price, also it hinders you, the player. So we will give you guys develop, uh, more developments as time goes. So guys, make sure you uh, subscribe to the channel where you get this information. You will be the first to know. Yeah, another story here uh, is, um, we've talk, spoken about Neves, we've spoken about the defender, uh, Lisandro Martinez situation. Yes, and uh, the other story, what was the story again? We're talking, uh, there is a story about Manchester United, which we, we have to talk about. It's about Ten Hag's future. We we know that um, uh, Ineos, uh, they have to make addition of Ten Hag in the summer. And it's been reported that for now, things are hanged in the air. It is not yet written on stone that Eric Ten Hag will stay as a Manchester United manager. And uh, we have to um, give some time for that to to settle with the two sides. I think by now that both sides are really having a chat, trying to know how to go forward. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll see how, how, how to go forward. There might be certain situations that Eric Ten Hag, uh, certain things that Eric Ten Hag disagrees with the, with the new management. And while and uh, and uh, he might say, okay, we, I, I, I mean, I won't, I won't go on with this. And uh, they, they and that can lead to his dismissal. So we don't know. We don't know. There is no decision yet. And in regards to all of most of these stories, guys, I, <laughs> about Manchester United coming in and out, we are here as fans discussing with you guys the breaking news. What is new? I mean, what, what the papers are talking. It doesn't mean it's going to be that way because you know it's Manchester United. Don't forget about that. It's a club where that generates a lot of news. Everybody will jump in every news. Even players and managers, agents. I've told you guys in all my videos i work with an agent so i know the way he works even agents can pay um papers to to help to generate these stories so yeah uh, uh you guys should be careful but we will be reacting to all this news because that's what we do we are just fans and um yeah so Erasmus Holland, uh, Erasmus Holland uh, is, uh, has been, uh, I mean, if I'm not mistaken, he is one of the uh, the players in form in, in the Premier League. You could almost say in Europe, but because he's the highest, well, he's amongst the highest goal scorers in the Champions League. But um, yeah, he's, he, he's fantastic, isn't it? It's just unbelievable that one of the highest goal scorers in the Champions League will not play the knockout stage. Uh, it's a it's a pity, but but uh, yeah. So um, United, we are playing uh, next game. It's against uh, Aston Villa. That will be on Sunday, guys. Uh, make sure you are on the channel. I want to ask a question to you guys. If you watched it now, you're a legend. I would like to be doing some streams, but the question is the timing. Should it be twelve o'clock UK time or one o'clock UK time? Please drop your comments below. Get back to me if you watch it. Again, guys. Please make sure you click the like on the video, subscribe to the channel. We are a small channel. We won't go anywhere without you. So it depends on you. So make sure you get involved. Drop your comments below. I want to ask you this question again. Should Manchester United give Ten Hag 
another year as manager. Should the Ines group left send, uh, give Tendak another year as Manchester United or should he be uh, be, uh, be be sacked at the end of the season no matter what? Drop your comments below. Would love to rep um, reply it by myself as I do it. And uh, yeah, glad talking to you. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye.